It's no secret that the ninja class is one of the best in Fire Emblem Fates, and most units that have ninja in their natural class set are better for it. Some people think the ninja class is so good, they'd put all three characters that start as ninjas in the top tier of the game. But as you get more experience with the game, you'll find that not all ninjas are created equal. And thanks to this game's reclassing system, the natural ninjas aren't always the best at doing ninja things. Saizo has stats that compare favorably to basically every other character in the game. But the same is not true for his brother Kaze, who's focus on speed and resistance above all else doesn't match up very well against this game's maps without some heavy investment. Kagero is the ninja that's focused the most on her strength stat. She actually has the highest strength growth in the entire game. So how does she stack up against the rest of your options? Joining me to answer this question is a boy, a Fire Emblem Challenge Runner who has finished all three fates routes using negative 100% growths, where instead of characters having a chance to gain stats from leveling up, they are guaranteed to lose a point in all of their stats with each level. So let's go over everything you need to know about Kagero after you hit subscribe. Let's get started. So you've just finished a playthrough using Kagero. How did you use her? Well, I instantly promoted her, and then using the Berserker I got from Connor's Paralog, I kind of just slapped onto her, and she kind of just murdered everything until, like, I got Ryoma. <laughs> so yeah, Kagero starts as a level 10 ninja who is recruited after Chapter 10, which means her first map is the boat map with flyers in it. She starts with the Sting Shuriken, which is an effective weapon against armors, although you probably want to replace that with a Iron Shuriken, which you can forge later on. The Sting Shuriken does have a high might stat, but that gets lowered every time it gets used against enemies that it isn't effective against. She also happens to come with an energy drop, which you can use on her before promoting and make sure that she caps her strength earlier, which I don't know why you would want to do that. It does help reach benchmarks, but you are slightly reducing her long-term prospects by doing that. Yeah, I mean, she's, she already has enough strength at like level 10 promoted so it's really not necessary unless you really like the green number because i do like the color green too so yeah kagero is the ninja that is focused the most in strength she starts with a base of 15 which is kind of crazy by this point in the game her growth in the strength stat is 70 along with her speed although her speed is not quite as amazing as her strength stats. She actually has just one more base speed than Saizo, who isn't really the fast ninja. Kagura will have enough time to make her growth rate actually matter. She will end up with a significantly higher speed stat than Saizo if raised long term, but her base is not great. Yeah, so having like one more speed than Saizo at this point in the game may not seem like the most ideal, but I mean, despite how much I actually dislike growths in general, her speed growth is, is pretty high, and en enemies, they don't really get fast that quickly. So normally she would be able to like, kind of like get speed faster than the enemies, and then she'll be fine late game. And even now, it's like as long as you get her base speed to work right now, then it's really not an issue. And it does work even at like level 10-1. The main issue is obviously the bulk, because no matter what, the bulk is going to be pretty bad. Yeah, 9 base defense and 30 growth is not ideal, and that is not helped by ninja class growths. Her HP is also pretty lacking, with a base of 22 and a growth of 35. That's rank levels of HP. Not great. Yeah, both of her um, stats are very lacking, and obviously, like... Even if you decide, like, I'm going to promote her later, that doesn't really fix the issue, because the growths are so low. And the defense is a much bigger issue because in late game you definitely want, if you want to use her as a carry, you want her to face multiple enemies and of course having one less defense that builds over time with big, the bigger the group is. Well, HP, I find that the HP is really bad, yes, but I feel like it's not as bad as the defense because like also there's the tonic increases it by 5, the tonic for defense only, is, it's only by 2 and it, she needs a lot of defense in order to work in late game. And that's not even her only issue because her hit rates are also not going to be ideal. While shurikens do have very good hit compared to other Hoshiden weapons, they're still not the best and the 10 skill base and 7 luck base are not great, especially when coupled with their middling growths, 40% in skill and 30% in luck. Yeah, her hit rates can be kind of an issue. Like if if you starting from when cargo joins, her hit rates are really not that bad, even against axe units. It's more of an issue when you start finding promoted units and you kind of go around like the 80% hit rates, which are not very reliable. And uh, I guess in late game, you get the dual shuriken, which really helps against axe units. But then at that point, it's kind of like 
you have to be kind of specific with which units you want to fight against because if you're mixing like axes and like lances and such uh the hit base can still be not favorable that's obviously like probably the second biggest issue because it's like oh yeah like her speed is not that good like as a mechanist but no it's actually fine it's just the other issues that are hard to build because you can't even like cook skill in the mess hall because like i guess the cook has skill issue yeah you either need Saizo to be your chef or you need to duo one of the random benefits chefs like Jacob who gives plus two to each of your ingredients plus an extra two to a random stat and that random stat can be skill. Yeah and I mean also in my run I had like 99 of all ingredients I don't know how many ingredients you would normally have in a normal playthrough because like you only get one like ingredient at the start and then you have to go to other castles but I, I also heard that they were kind of shutting down the whole castle thing, so <laughs> it might be a bit harder now. She does at least start in Ninja, which allows her to take full advantage of her strength stats to make up for the low might of shurikens. So, one rounding basically every enemy in the game is definitely possible if you invest in her correctly, just because her strength stats is that high. She can pretty comfortably get away with using the low might shurikens and she does start with c rank shurikens meaning that she can use the steel shuriken at base which further increases her effective attack to incredible levels as long as her speed can keep up with the enemies she can very comfortably get any kill that she wants yeah if you're going to use a steel shuriken you probably want to be like a mass ninja for that because i'm not sure if mechanist is like gonna be enough at least for like uh, by the time she joins. By late game, I think it, it, it'll work. Like, you have way more like speed options at that point because rally speed is like the biggest po point, which you don't have when she joins. But yeah, it's Steel Shuriken, also, I, I don't really find like that's needed at all. Because like, the thing is, you can just buy like two Iron Shurikens, that's 2,000 gold, which is the same as a Steel. You can just forge it, you get up six might, one less, which doesn't matter. She's, she's still gonna kill and she doesn't get the speed drop from it. And being a ninja, she also has access to one of the best pair bonuses in the game plus three speed and plus one movement is kind of crazy. It allows units like Silas to just hold forward and kill every one range units that you need him to. Ninja pair-ups are just really good. And the other really nice thing about Kagura specifically with pair-up is that with just the C support, you, you, you already get plus one strength. So you get one strength and three speed with the plus one movement just from C support, which is really nice. If you go to A support, then you get two strength from it. And she also gets one extra point of speed from the S support, meaning that if she goes into Mechanist, she can have plus four strength, plus one speed, plus two defense, plus two resistance, which is a very respectable pair of bonus. And Master Ninja just further commits her to it being a speed pair up, allowing her to give, I believe, an extra point of speed while maintaining the movement pair bonus. Yeah, you could. Um, I, I, if you're gonna go pair up, then yeah, Master Ninja is also a good pair up. Because if you're just gonna play normally, I would just say just go Mechanist. And you know, if you're playing normally and you go Mechanist, you can still use her as a pair of bot fine. Her personal skill is not very good though. It is Shuriken Mastery. If this unit is hit by a Shuriken, the attacker also takes the status effects and half the damage dealt to Kagero. It is extremely rare that you're going to find a situation where this is going to be useful. She will probably be comfortably killing every ninja that she comes up against in one round anyways, and dagger using classes are extremely rare in birthrights. There's like a few maids in late game. She joins after the big ninja chapter in chapter 10. There are a few dagger users in paralogs, but they are also probably the rarest weapon type in birthright. It's not great to have this skill in this game. Yeah, I'm. I, I guess you know I, the final chapter. You can like use it against the main neck to Garen, but like you can just kill Garen. So <laughs> yeah, Kagero does have one of the better class sets in the game, just because she has ninja at base. She doesn't even need to use a heart seal to change into it or build supports to get into a one to range wielding class. So. Ninja is just one of the best classes in the game because it allows her to use daggers and juggernaut through the late game of birthrights. The skills are not super useful until you get very late in the game though. She does get access to lock touch and poison strike 
which are pretty niche on a unit that is going to be making most of their contributions killing things rather than shipping them down. Poison Strike, maybe it might be a bit relevant for when you're fighting promoted units, but after that, like she's just gonna either kill or she's gonna be enemy facing, which you can't activate Poison Strike. Yeah. Lethality is pretty irrelevant because she can get pretty much any kill that she wants in one round without having to proc it, and her skill stat is also not good at 10. That translates to that translates to a 2% proc rate because proc skills round down to the nearest integer when calculating the proc rates. It's not good on Kagero especially. Yeah, it's quite unfortunate, you know. There's, yeah, there's no point. Maybe they got tired of people using Long Ku and Awakening and just getting into like the base level for assassination and just one turning every map with it. Yeah. At level 15, Master Ninja, she does get Shuriken Fair, which further increases the amount of damage that she can do, which can help her reach one round thresholds even after promoting at level 10. It's kind of crazy because Kagura will end up capping strength even with a level 10 promotion by the time she reaches level 20 promoted. Yes, I, I would say like the, just the extra 5 um, attack, it, it might be like, oh, it'd be overkill, but no, I, I, I think it's still good. Like, I think it's still useful, especially for like really late game maps where like enemies are kind of mixed together. Like for example, in chapter 25, you have like both the Great Knight and Dark Knight combo at the right side. So it's like you want to use the Sting Shuriken, but I, I believe you lose like 4 might if you use it against the Dark Knight. And those Dark Knights, they're not frail. They have like 2 less, like 2 or 4 less defense than the Great Knights, which is not that much frailer. And obviously you kind of need to use the Sting Shuriken to kill the Great Knights. But with, with me specifically, I need Shuriken Fair in order to kill both the Dark Knights and the Great Knight with just the Sting Shuriken. Yeah, okay, it, it was it was Forge, it was a plus one, but I needed Shuriken Fair specifically for that instance. So it is nice um, if you don't if you don't have the strength at that point. Like, so for example, you only promoted like me, but I guess my, I mean, my Kagura was kind of low level too at that point, but it's good. Yeah. And in Mechanist, she also gets access to Golem Bane, and Kagura is actually one of the better users of Golem Bane, because she has c and Shurikens, she can make use of the higher might Shurikens to deal pretty big damage to the Stoneborn in Chapter 20 and she is going to be a pretty likely early promotion candidate, meaning that she will definitely get Skull and Bane before entering that chapter. Yeah, it's good for that one map. I, I don't know any other map that you need it for, but I mean, like, hey, it's better than, like, a skill that does nothing for you. There is one Skull and Bane in Iago's map, ch chapter 25, uh, and I think there's a Golem in Invasion 3. There is a golem. Okay, the thing was, I tried, I tried testing it in twenty five. It it just doesn't work because like the golem is surrounded by so many units that she's just gonna die. I also tried using yeah. the ship with her, but the issue was that for some reason my cogwork it was he was only like level ten fifteen, which is not even high, and the maid just refused. He entrapper just refuses to use entrap on me. Like he just he just wouldn't because I think her vest was too high, even though like she wasn't even <laughs> that high leveled. So I couldn't wow. even like test it, but I you shouldn't do it anyways because he's so frail. Though Replicate is actually one of the better skills for her to have because it allows you to remotely adjust her stats. So Replicas can pass down the buffs they get from things like Rallies in order to transfer them to the main unit. So if you use something like an Expiring Song or Rally Strength on a Replica, that will also apply to the primary Kagura who's doing all the combats while you don't have to put any of your supporting units that apply those buffs in danger in the front lines. It can be very useful in giving you extra flexibility in how you position your support units. Uh, you def if you wanted to carry, you, um, Rally Speed is very useful, but obviously it may you may not, not always want your, to have your Rally Speed next to Kagro every time you want to use it, but since we replicate, you know, you don't have to do that. You can just have them kind of in the back lines and you'll be fine. And her heart seal class is Diviner. Now, Diviner is an extremely niche class for Kaguro thanks to her zero magic, zero growth in magic, along with not even having a good defense stats to take hits and see combat on enemy phase. It's not great. Magic plus two, I guess, exists. She's never going to be using Flame Shuriken. She does not want to see any combat holding a tome. So don't bother going into Diviner until Kagro's already promoted, in which case the only class that she'll actually want to go into is going to be Basara, which has access to lances in addition to tomes. 
I guess, you know what? You could go the Viner and you can have uh, FB12 you bellow, you know? Hmm. <laughs> Hey, I mean, like, hey, it'll be, it's funny. Yeah, she probably is not going to be a very good Rally Magic user, because getting her three levels in a Tome Locked and Staff Locked class is going to be a horrible experience. Don't do that to yourself. And you would much rather stay in Basara, just poke things with your Brass Naginata plus one with your massive strength stats and get your experience that way. So that will get Kagero to Rend Heaven, which is a proc skill that increases her damage, which you probably don't need on her. But at level 15 is the big reason why you're going into Basara, which is Quixotic. Quixotic increases her hit rates by 30 points, while also increasing the enemy's hit rates on her by 30 points. It is a double-edged sword, but it significantly increases the reliability if you've done the math correctly in making sure that she can survive and seeing that she can kill all the units in one round. If you know exactly what she can do, this will allow her to do it perfectly. Yeah, it's it's helpful for the hit rates. It's just more like, do you want to be like in Basar for like four levels just to get that skill? Because, um, yeah. it, it does take a while, and not, not to mention that it's like, by the time you kind of reach the point where you can class change, you're already in the late game. So it's like, you have to go through all of that just to get the hit rates. When I find that, honestly, just getting like Shuriken Fair is kind of like, was enough for me at least, for, for, for her to carry. But the hit rate, I, I would say it's still relevant. Like, I, I would say I wouldn't recommend, but if you go, I mean, like, you, I, I would say you, you would still benefit from the hit rates. Like, that's, that's kind of how I would say it. Yeah. There are certain builds for Kagero where it is mission critical to get 100% hit rates all the time. And in those cases, then yeah, Quixotic is important to grab. But in general play, you will pretty often have other supporting units in range to pick off any enemies that Kagero misses. So it's not the biggest deal if she misses one or two enemies. Also, I would add that sometimes groups of enemies are kind of like like for example, if you're gonna do like um there was one group in chapter twenty three, if you're gonna like make her fight the bow knight and great knight, hit rates are an issue, but to be honest, she would die anyways if she was to fight that group. But other groups, they're kinda of like organized in a way. I think the good example would be chapter twenty four, where there are groups like heroes and then generals and then berserkers, they're all kinda of like you can all fight them separately. And that at that rate, hit rates are really not an issue because you can just use the iron shuriken for weapon triangle advantage against the swords. You can use the dual shuriken for the axe units, and the generals, they have no void, so you should have, your, your hit base should be fine, even though they use lances. And she can also get another copy of Diviner through a Rorty Friendship if you want to save a Heart Seal and use a Friendship Seal instead. Though, raising Kagro support with Orochi is probably not something that you want to be doing, because there are better speed backpacks for Orochi, and Kagro does not need a magic backpack in the form of Orochi. Yeah, if you want to do Flame Shuriken, you can just use Saiso for that. She does get access to Oni Savage. If you want a extremely high strength growth just to see big number, then I guess Oni Savage is a class line to do that in. The skills aren't really beneficial to her though. Seal resistance is useless because she is going to be killing any enemy that she comes up against anyways, and does not use a magic weapon, so why? You probably have enough shove users without reclassing Kagero into that class. Death Blow only really hurts her bulk, because for a unit as frail as Kagero, she wants to be getting as many charges of the guard gauge as possible, and killing an enemy in fewer hits by getting a critical hit just reduces the amount of guard gauge that you will get. You would much rather be two-shotting rather than one-shotting so that you can maximize the amount of shield charges that you have. Yeah, you, you, you don't want to do that. It's, it's also really ass for like when you're planning, because um, uh, um, when you plan and you want to put in a group of enemies, usually the enemies just are just going to attack the same way, so then you can see, okay, which enemies hit the shield gauge and not, but if you crit, then you know, that kind of messes it all up, and you may accidentally shield gauge against a weak enemy, or get hit by a strong enemy that you could shield gauge against, so there's no benefit in getting extra crit when, you know, she should be killing the enemies in the first place. Yeah, and while counter in theory could be pretty useful just because Kagero's defense is so low that she'll be taking big damage from any hit, it is really not great because she can meet any one round threshold that she wants through other means that aren't counter. You really need to be 
doing some extreme planning to figure out exactly which enemies counter will first activate on, because if her guard gauge blocks a hit that she was supposed to counter, then, well, she isn't going to be dealing damage using counter on that turn. And also, finding enemies that Kagro will fail to run around is not always going to happen if you are sacking Kagro's attack. Yeah, just don't do that. Maybe, I, I, don't, I don't even know if it would help you get like generous and such, because like, um, I, I would rather sort of use this thing shuriken for that. And she does get access to Salvage Blow if she goes into Blacksmith. It is a luck percent chance to obtain a weapon on a kill on player phase. And if you look at her luck stats, it is not going to be very good. It will never be very good. So Salvage Blow is not a skill that Kaguro in particular wants. I guess Lancebreaker isn't the worst thing just because Generals and Great Knights are some of the most threatening enemies in Birthrights. So having extra avoid and hit rates on those guys can definitely help her survive. Actually, it's kind of funny you say that about Great Knights because I'm pretty sure in Chapter 23 they only have axes and swords. And then in Chapter 25 there's only one Great Knight in each group that has a lance. Yeah. And Generals are just slow as balls anyways. Because I, I did kind of imply that maybe Lances might be like the ones with least hit rates with the weapons you have, but I, I mean, it really shouldn't be an issue. All Lance units are slow, even like Sander is slow as shit. But he doesn't even use Lance, I'm stupid. <laughs> he, uses, he uses sword. <laughs> she does have the option to go to Archer using Setsuna friendship. Pairing up Setsuna with Kagero is really not the worst thing you could be doing with Setsuna. Setsuna does provide two strength and two speed using the Archer's pair up and Setsuna at B support can give an extra 2 speed, which is very nice for Kagero, supporting her early speed if she early promotes into Mechanist, which will reduce her speed from hit space in Ninja. Yeah, specifically for like when she joins, uh, speed, you, the speed pair up is good, but then like later on you, you don't need it. But I guess you don't need to pair up with Setsuna at some point. I guess the more important skills you want are like, you know, early on. Like skill plus two, that's like, I guess, nice to have early on and I mean, quick draw that exists if you want. Yeah, uh, skill plus two is an extra plus three hits just always on her. So an extra three hits is never going to be a bad thing, though. Is it really worth spending five maps to build Setsuna friendship? Probably not. And it's not like the other skills that she's going to be getting from this class line are going to be significant game changers either. Quick draw is an extra plus four damage. Uh, Kagero isn't really hurting for damage, but I guess it can save you money on tonics. But do you really want to be spending 2000 gold on a friendship seal to get into Archer? You would much rather just buy the tonics and not bother with going into Archer. <laughs> I, I say this whatever, because it only works on player face. You want to use her for like enemy face, because that's what Birthright is about. And that doesn't work there. Same with Certain Blow. Certain Blow is an extra plus 40 hits on player phase, and that can definitely help if you really need Kagero to pick off the most threatening enemy as she walks forward into them. But her hit rates aren't going to be that bad that she always needs it. It certainly does help with reliability, but spending 3 levels with a bow lock is really not ideal. Yeah, you don't really want to do that. I would note that I guess the most relevant I've seen about hit rates is I believe chapter 14 when you fight the paladins because her hit rates are like 80% against them, which is, it's not really that reliable when there's multiple paladins on the map, but I, I still wouldn't go do three levels of archer just for certain blow. Especially because I'm enemy facing yeah. those paladins as well. And she will probably not make much use of bows. So bow fair is going to be pretty useless. She can probably kill wyverns using shurikens if she stacks her strength enough anyways. So it is not worth getting to level 15 sniper on Kagero. You can actually just one round the wyverns in chapter 23 with just uh, rally strength and like a pair up with the um, dual shuriken. And Kinchi knight skills aren't great either. Air superiority does help against wyverns, but she's probably doing just fine against those guys anyways. I mean, the extra avoid chance does help, but it's probably not going to be the most impactful thing that's worth spending three levels in Kinchi Knights, losing access to her shurikens, and having to spend an extra 4,000 gold in seals to get there and back. And Amaterasu is also not going to be great 
If you do replica Kagura shenanigans, you can have the main units stay behind and provide the healing aura, I guess, but it's really pretty late to be reclassing if you want to get to Abiturasu. Yeah, no, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Yeah. I, I don't even see the point because like if you're replicating, I feel like if you're doing a different replicate strat, that would just be worse to have for Kagro. But Kagro has access to more skills through marriage. And does anything here look appealing to you? So you you see all of these uh, people? Yeah, uh, just f all of them. Just look at Hinata. That's the only one you should be looking at right now. Because <laughs> the thing is, I, I um before this uh, recording, uh, I did entire Laken one of just Kagro at like level 10 promoted. So obviously at 10, 10, her stats are not as high as you would normally have at that point, but I just want to see how it goes. And I did manage to make it work all the way to like end game. It wasn't that hard, but the main thing that I needed was bulk. Bulk is the most important thing for Kagro if she wants to carry because she's going to be fighting so many enemies. And out of all of these people, the best person to give over the bulk needed is Hinata. The thing is that Hinata, he can reclass into only Chieftain. And with marriage, he gives two strength and defense. So he gives plus six defense to her, and you, you need that in order to survive the group of enemies in, in um, late game. And you also get like the nice bonus of like the skills. The skills, they're not completely ne necessary, but I would say they're kind of like better than some of the other marriage options you have, like Vantage, you can work with that. I, Life and Death looks cool, but I wouldn't go with that. Just go with Hinata, I don't see the point of going any other class. I think a point would be made later on of why you want to pair other people with Kagura, but not because for Kagura herself. Like, it's more for them than... Dual Splow does help in reducing the amount of healing that you'll have to do, although it's not really the most applicable skill because a lot of the attacks that she'll be doing on player phase, her opponent isn't going to be able to counter anyways, so Dual Splow will have no effect. The extra avoid only matters if the enemy can hit her, and if they don't, well, it's not doing anything. But Vantage is probably one of the most desirable skills to have on Kagura, because her hit rates are not going to be super ideal. If she misses, Vantage can help her pick up the skills that she missed on the previous enemy phase. So if she's below half health, she is at a pretty high risk of dying, but as long as she gets that third hit in in time, then she can kill them before they can kill her. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely just good for reliability because she's so frail. Ideally, you don't want to get two-shotted, you kind of want to get like three-shotted. That's kind of like the minimum, I would say, if you want her to carry. But in, in the yeah. instance where she already gets hit twice and then she misses, then Vantage is very useful there. Astra isn't the worst thing to have because she will be using daggers, which means she does have access to the ability to proc skills but her skill just isn't very good. Astra does help build her guard gauge, I guess, but her strength is so high that you will not be getting all five Astra hits basically ever, so she won't be automatically filling her guard gauge every single time that Astra procs, so the actual amount that it will boost her bulk is not great. Yeah, and as I said, when you're planning and you want to see like how a group of enemies attack her, Astra can just completely f*** you up with that. Because the difference between Death Flow is that Death Flow you can crit if f that particular encounter, but Astra it, it can hit multiple times and then it f up multiple encounters. Like in case like maybe she also crits during those one of those Astra hits, you know that could be really annoying. And like she's never going to be using swords, even in Master Ninja, which has access to swords. You would just much rather be using a dagger or shuriken anyways, so just why? I don't, I don't know why. When I was thinking of swords, the first thing that came to mind was the Levin Sword. I, I don't know why. <laughs> you don't want to- don't use that. You don't even get one in Birthright. <laughs> you don't- oh, that's so cringe. What the hell? She does have access to seal strength, so in the catastrophic events where she misses once on the first enemy phase, she misses again on the second enemy phase, and the enemy gets a second chance to attack her. Seal strength will reduce the damage they deal by 5, which can be pretty impactful, but spending 3 levels in Master of Arms, maybe not ideal. Although, if you're going to get Vantage, spending 1 extra level isn't the worst thing to do. Yeah, I think this is kind of a similar thing to Quixotic, where it's like, I wouldn't go through the class line, but if you do, I still think you would benefit from doing so. The minus five strength, that's very useful. You want any defense you you get. You need all the defense you can get because she's just frail. 
he still fail. <laughs> so it's it, yeah. it, it'll be it'll benefit you. I just don't think it's worth it going through. But if you do, it'll, it'll be good for you. And I mean, if you look at our other base skills, you don't need poison strike. You don't need lethality. You don't need lock touch. You don't need golem bane at that point. So like you have plenty of space for skills like this. Yeah. And life and death, Kagro is probably one of the best users in the game of it, but I don't think life and death builds are ever very good, so... You're only doing a life and death build if you hard commit to doing the full life and death build using four level 15 promoted skills. And even then, it's not great, but life and death is the funny skill, and it should be credited as such. I mean, if you're going Diviner Kagura, maybe you should go pick it up so you can do more damage with your tomes. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, think of, think about it. You, you go plus 2 magic, and you go plus 5 tome fairy, and then plus 10 life and death. I'm, I'm, already thinking of a new, I'm already thinking of a new build. I'm already thinking, just from looking at that. 17. The attack right there. <laughs> so, her other options are also not bad. She has access to the Troubadour class through Jacob which is another dagger raising class in the form of Maid. Uh, it's generally not going to be better than Mechanist in most cases, but it does provide some skills that aren't the worst. Uh, resistance plus two is just flat minus damage against mages, which not a bad thing, and Demoselle reduces the damage taken by male units within two spaces by two, which in mid game can definitely help. By the time you're doing late game clears though, it's utility is diminished a lot just because Kagro will usually be sent to the front lines alone and not close to any units that will want to be taking many hits. I mean, I guess technically if you have like replicate, it would be a bit more useful because then you can have a replicate Kagro like near your mirrored units. Yeah. And by the time you actually get Troubadour, it will require seven maps of raising your support with Jacob who is a support unit, so it's going to be hard to justify building his supports with Kagero while playing fast. It's not the best situation, so Demosel is going to be active a lot later in the playthrough than you might like on Kagero. It's not great. And the other skills in the class line, getting them on Kagero is not super ideal. The Rally Resistance and Inspiration come from Strategist, which is Tome Locks, and we've seen that Kagero starts with zero base magic and a zero growth. So, probably not what you want to be doing with her. Well, actually, I'm thinking you, you can get Demo Cell and then Rally Rest and Inspiration on Replicate, you know, that the ultimate support Kagero right there. But at that point, why not just do it on a unit that has a magic stat so that getting that stuff is easier? Uh, because, uh, you see, um, the, the, the reason is, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it'll be a reference to Fire Emblem Heroes. Because, <laughs> like, she has a maid outfit there. If she does go into maid, she does get Live to Serve. She will probably never use a healing staff in the entire game, so it is almost useless. Although, if you do find an opportunity to use the healing staff, I guess... It helps her with her self-sustain in your action economy. Like, it's not the worst skill to have. No, it's like 8, eight you get like 8 HP from it. <laughs> yeah. It's less than a vulnerary. <laughs> yeah. And Tome Breaker is fine, although she'll probably be matching up well enough against mages, especially when res plus 2 is the first skill that you get in this class line. <laughs> yeah, it's... Mages are definitely the least threatening, because unlike her defense, her res is not bad, and she also has weapon trying advantage. And, like, for example, I think like chapter 25, there really aren't like any mage groups. They're kind of just like all at the ballista, so they're one by one. So it's not very noticeable at all. I mean, like at all. <laughs> she has access to Cavalier through Silas, which can further boost her damage, which will reduce your reliance on proccing strength level ups. Elbow Room is a flat plus three damage stack, which is just good. One of the best skills in the game. Shelter provides utility in allowing you to spend her action to enable another unit to act twice. Um, you, you just do that with like Silas though. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I feel like the only part where it's super relevant, where you want to do like shelter strats, is like when you're skipping maps, because normally you kind of want to be paired up with like units like Kagro and even Silas. Anyways. If you go further into the Paladin line, you can get access to Defender, 
which is plus one strength, plus one speed, plus one defense, plus one resistance, plus, plus one, skill. one skill, plus one luck. So you're never going to complain about that. Plus two to hits, plus one to damage, plus one to bulk, plus one to speed is never going to be a bad thing. Though spending three levels in Paladin, eh, if you can justify it, then yeah, you're not going to complain. I mean, I, 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 I still wouldn't go with it, but if you do, then I mean, hey, I, I think the plus one defense and plus one skill, that's, that's nice. And the other extra stats yeah. you get, plus one speed is also pretty nice for speed benchmarks you might not be able to reach depending on your playthrough. I believe that is Aegis, which reduces the amount of damage from bows, tomes, shurikens, and the other specialty weapons, including Dragon Breath. Her skill stat is, again, not going to be very high, so her proc rate on this is not going to be something that you should rely on, so why are you spending level 15 in Paladin? Just don't. Luna is yet another damage stacking skill that she does not need, and it is a skill percent proc rate, so just don't get it on her. And while Armored Blow can seem tempting, she can often just, on player phase, attack a unit that won't be counterattacking her, so the skill just becomes completely useless, just like Duelist Blow. Yeah, it's not worth going through four levels of Great Knight just to get Armored Blow. Um, I, I believe most of the like bulky units in late game don't even really have one to two range equipped when you fight them anyways. And the ones that do are probably using Tomes, in which case Kagero is not going to be struggling. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't even work against Tomes anyways. Yeah. Uh, Sky Knight exists. Kagero probably does not want to spend any time in it, because by the time you spend your seven naps to build your suit Baki Marriage, Darting Blow is going to be pretty useless, because she has caught up in speed and you're going to be fighting Norian enemies for the rest of the game, meaning that the extra speed bonus is not going to matter for most enemies. Yeah, and it only works on one enemy per player face. Camaraderie for a bit of extra healing is nice, although you're gonna heal 2 to 3 HP. Hooray! <laughs> yeah, all for the optimized strats. Rally speed, I guess you could use Kagero for rallies, but why are you using Kagero for rallies and not a dedicated support unit that gets these things a lot easier? Yeah, no, she should be the one getting rally speed, not, not the one giving it. And if you want a rally bot, you should go magic and luck, because Elder is worse, it's, you can play it off as a joke better. And if you're deploying Subaki, Subaki is already going to be a rally speed user. You do not need another one, because Subaki will be producing Kyodori, who will also have rally speed. Just why are you doing this? And again, Kagro does not need Warding Blow because she matches up well enough against mages. The final class that she gets access to is Shrine Maiden through Ozawa Marriage, and I guess you could do worse. She gets access to Miracle, which, hey, her bulk is not good, so if you overextend her, she has a small chance of surviving with Miracle because her luck stat is never going to be very high. It's never going to be a very good chance of rocking Miracle. If you go overextend, then you deserve to die. Yeah. You also get access to Rally Luck. I mean, sure, you can use Kagura as a Rally Bot, but you have much better options. Dude, I'm telling you, the strat, Demo Say, Rally Rest, Rally Luck, Inspiration, come on. And Renewal does help. It is 30% healing at the start of every turn, but it requires you to spend three levels bow locked in Priestess. Don't do that to yourself. Yeah, I, I have a solution. It's called a Vulnerary, you know, those things that you can buy in the shop, you know? Yeah, it will heal her for the same amount, probably more. Just yeah. don't bother. No, no, like at 30 HP, she will only get 9 HP, so it is less. And Counter Magic is again probably the least useful skill on Kagero just because she will one round every mage that she comes up against so why are you spending level 15 in priestess don't so yeah Kagero just likes to have ninja samurai like most units in this game so yeah you mentioned that Hinata is her best option if you are using Kagero as a primary combat unit but there are a few other candidates you would want for her to marry because she is the only female ninja that passes ninja through marriage to any unit. And some of the better candidates for this are Jacob, who can get access to early replicate, units like Kaden, who 
are trapped in terrible, terrible classes that would much rather have access to a dagger wielding class. And the ninja class can also just make your good units better. Units like Silas and Izama would really like to have access to the class and make use of their amazing stats in a class that isn't actively holding them back. And the ninja class line provides that. Yeah, so when I mentioned that if you want to pair other units with Kagro, it's more for them. That's the reason, because then they get the ninja class and that would be usually beneficial for them. If you don't really care about pairing up Kagro for herself, then she's a pretty good wife for a bunch of other units because of her class. So when it comes to using Kagro in a playthrough, you do reach another question. When do you promote her? 10. Now, I do a lot of comparisons using benchmarks for level 20 promotion, which does benefit a good amount of characters quite a bit, but I don't think Kagero is one of them, because Kagero's strength stats will get caps even if she promotes instantly. Another notable level that you might look into promoting Kagero is like level 17, which is on average when she will cap strength if she's unpromoted, but you said you were in favor of just instantly promoting Kagura, right? Yeah, if, if you promote a 20 or 17, you, you're just a scrub. You don't you don't understand the true power of level 10 promoted. So, okay, so let's look at the level 10 stats and then let's look at the level 17 stats real quick, okay? So if you promote at level 17, 7, she will have, let's look, let, we don't have to look at the strength and speed right now, they're irrelevant. She will have 29 HP and 16 defense by chapter 23, okay? And if we look at 10, Kagro, she'll have 28 HP and 15 defense. She only has, if you wait until level 17 just to get one HP and one defense, you're stupid. I, it's not gonna help her. You need to do a lot more than just give her extra levels for her to work in late game. And you may be thinking, well, if you look at the stats, you know, she has like four more speed by the time you reach chapter 23, but that doesn't matter either. You have way more speed options at that point, like rally speed. I didn't even use the speed pair up in my playthrough. I used Hinata, and he, Hinata doesn't give any speed when he goes on only um, chieftain. The point is that there, there are two ways, you can go early or late, and normally for late promotion, you want to go late so that you can get like extra stats that you need. But the thing is, every single extra stat that Kagura gets does not matter. Because if you look at the bulk, she only gets one more HP and one more defense. That is not going to fix her. That's not going to help. If we look at strength, it's like two more. That's that's nothing. She's still going to run around fine. If we look at speed, four more. Pretty big difference. But she has enough speed for late game anyways. So that does not matter. So none of the extra stats she gets when you wait actually matter. So you may think, okay, so what are the benefits of like early promoting? Because there's a difference between what are the benefits and like... In indifference, indifference between promoting. What well, the benefits of waiting, of just instantly promoting, is that by the time she joins up to like, I only tested from like 11 to like 14, but the, the increase of stats helps so much in just terms of handling enemies all around the, each match because she gets a lot more bulk, she gets extra strength needed for some benchmarks, and she may lose some speed, but during when she joins, as long as you give her like a speed pair, up, then her speed is good enough. So for example, if you look at chapter 11, there's a lot of vibrance and such, and you may think, oh, that's not really a good map for her because like there are vibrance that can like two shot her at base and also have axes. But when you promote chapter 11, I use just a regular Hinata pair up, not even like any support, just a regular Hinata pair up. And I also gave a strength with defense tonic. Actually, the strength tonic doesn't matter. For some reason, I forgot that she can use both. So I kind of built around Two shot in the bottom falco with the shuriken. You don't don't do that. The main thing is, as long as you give her the promotion and defense tonic, she can basically handle the entire left side of the map. There, like, is no issues at all. The hit rates are fine. Her bulk is fine. You probably need to give her a bone though, in case she gets hit, so she can heal it off. But she can just handle the entire left hand side fine, and then she can also handle the promoted enemies fine. In my kill, I didn't use the Yumi, but you should use the Yumi because the, the flying units. But yeah, she can just decimate everyone. And just to go even further, in chapter 13, I didn't even like use like a 10-2 Kago. I used a 10-1 Kago again just to show the power. And this time I did a C support Hinata so I can get the one extra defense because like I said, defense is the most important stat that you need. And just the C support Hinata gives one defense. And I had a I used a bunch of different tonics, but um but to be fair, the enemies are a bit more scary. There's some um fighters that have like 27 attack that can easily two-shot her Vibrins, like Vibrin Lord. But with these tonics, just a plus one strength meal, and I had a speed tonic, it was just optional because I only did that from Camilla. She can also have reliable hit rates against all the unprotected action units. She can survive multiple action units in enemy phase, and she can easily go up to the top side, like bait Camilla, and even kill her, kill her if you want. It's 
And she can't do any of this if she's unpromoted because she doesn't have the bulk needed. And then if you look at chapter 14, I did the same thing where uh, the speed and strength that's mostly for like to kill intelligence, but with just a defense tonic, uh, Hinata pair up, and then a plus one defense mirror, she's able to handle multiple groups of paladins on her own. And it's just, and it's not just, oh, you need to kill all of them. You may just maybe make her a bit slower so she doesn't kill and feed the enemies to other units if you want. The point is, she can survive so many more encounters and just provide you with so much more value than if she was unpromoted, where she would just die in basically every single situation. Like 11, go against like two vibrants, she's dead. If 13, go against two actioners, she's dead. 14, you make her go in the paladin group, she's extremely dead. But with just the promotion and just very barely, I didn't even do that much investment. I did just a C support with Hinata. You can have a B support by the time you reach chapter 14. And with just a meal and tonics, she can just survive so many more hits. And it just provides so much more value to your army. So now we look at early and late. Early promotion, she does so much more for when she joins before Ryoma, and she can still she's still capable of carrying late game. In late game, I had to be more specific. I had to do like Hinata Oni Chieftain to get the six defense, do some more meals, tonics, and with that, that was enough. And to be fair, because she has enough strength to run around, she has enough speed to double, and she has the bulk needed to handle multiple enemies. I think chapter 24 is actually one of the easiest for her because there aren't that many groups of enemies. But the groups of enemies aren't that big. So she has a much easier time surviving them. I even did it with like Massive Ninja because I was trying to get Shuriken Fair and it was pretty easy. And in ch chapter 25, with just a 10-15 Kagro, she's capable of like handling the entire right side of her own. First part maybe like a little bit RNG, but once the second wave comes in and then you can player phase the Great Knight with the Axe, she has a much easier time just surviving all of that. And all I did was just Motor early, get her to 15, get Shuriken Fair, uh, Tonics, plus your Defense Wheel. I had to force a Sting Shuriken, but keep in mind, I also used a weaker Kagura because for average stats, I actually ran down because I think it's stupid that a 50% and 100% are the same. So your Kagura would be stronger, so you probably don't even need these extra things, and she's more than capable of handling all of this on her own. So yeah, early promotion, you get a much easier time from before Vioma joins, and she still works late game, while if you wait later, she still kind of performs the same late game, but she has like one extra HP in defense, like, that's not worth it. Yeah. There are some units that benefit a lot more from promoting lates with, like, the 65% defense growth of Rinka. That can become very impactful over the course of 10 levels. But on Kagero, with that 30% defense growth, over the course of 10 levels, that is 3 points of defense, and that is not going to fix her. So, yeah. It is not ideal. So promoting Kagero early will provide you with a lot more utility, and the difference between an early promoted Kagero and a late promoted Kagero is not going to be very significant. The speed does help in allowing you to not have to rally her speed every turn to continue doubling everything, but that's the only big thing. And here's also the deal. As, as long as you reach like 31 speed, then you basically double everything you need for late game. And if we're spe specifically talking about chapter 23, you only need like 24 speed to double everything except the Bonites, but you don't want her to fight the Bonites anyways, because she's going to just get destroyed by the group that the Bonites are in. So her speed is really not an issue at all. And you can easily stack it up, like if you don't want to do Rally, where you still have tonics and, you know, meals. And if you look at how Kagura's stats will compare to another one of your primary carries in the form of a level 20 promoted level 5 Master Ninja Saizo, who, let me remind you, is better stat-wise than most units in the game, Kagura, of course, is not going to compare very favorably. She has 4 less HP, although she still has 4 higher attack, even at a level 10 promotion but her speed is 7 less, meaning that she will require a lot more support. Her hit rates are also not going to be great, having 33 less hit, 20 less avoid, 13 less crit, 9 less dodge, 4 less defense, and 2 more resistance. But everything that Kagero has makes her just good enough to do everything that she needs to do, although it will be a bit more RMG dependent on her dodging things, and making sure that she actually kills everything that she needs to so she can clear the way to allow herself to get supported. Yeah, depending on your build, it may be a little bit RNG. I guess a good point is that like when you're carrying, for example, it, there may be like better options. I think you may want to have like five or six carries 
there probably are like five or six better carries than her, but I think she's still like one of the better options for a carry compared to the other units that you get in this game. And yeah, speed is, is fine. It's mostly hit rates that, that can be really annoying. The void is basically non-existent, so dodge shaking is not a thing. And the defense, four less than size, that, that's a really big deal. Because if we're just looking at a simple group of four enemies, that's basically 16 more damage for Kagor. And she has less HP than Saizo. With Guard Gage taken into account, it becomes about half of that, eight less damage, but that is still huge because her HP pool is never going to be very good. It is, Hoburg is just a big issue. That's why you need to invest a lot more and that's why Hinata is so useful for her. And that's why early, uh, later promoting does not help. You need to do a lot more to, to get her going. But yeah, this is just going to be the standard way to raise Kagero as a standard mechanist, and she will do just fine in the late, in the late game. But there is one other specialized build that you can do, and that is Super Kagero. This is the Vantage Life and Death build. So you need to go out of your way to get the four level 15 promoted skills in the form of Shuriken Fair, Quixotic, Life and Death, and Replicates alongside Vantage. So basically the game plan for this build is to replicate Kagero so that she can dual strike off of herself, effectively multiplying her damage by 1.5. Vantage allows her to attack first, even if she is doing this on enemy phase, while the enemies attack her. If she's below 50% health, she will always strike first and dual strike before they get to attack her, and she'll be able to get kills that way. Shuriken Fair and Life and Death are the big damage boosters, giving her a plus 15 damage stack. And adding to this is Quixotic, which increases her hit rates by 30 points, which is vital because if she gets hit while she's below 50% health, she is just gonna die. So yeah, the class routing for this is going to be very winding because you need to get four level 15 skills. So you need to spend a lot of your early levels just building up the prerequisite skills so that you can get all of the level 15 skills as soon as you possibly can. So you're instantly promoting so that you can get the more favorable promoted experience gain to get to level 15 as fast as possible. And you're spending five levels in Mechanist until you get Golem Bane. You're reclassing to Basara through a Heart Seal to get to Magic Plus 2, Feature Sights, and Rend Heaven. You're spending three levels in Master of Arms through a Samurai Marriage, getting Duelist Blow, Vantage, and Seal Strength. Then you're going into Master Ninja and getting Lethality and Shuriken Fair, your first level 15 skill. Then dipping back into Pasara for Quixotic. Then dipping back into Master of Arms for Life and Death. Then ending in Mechanist, which notably has the highest Strength Cap, which allows her to get Replicates. Yeah, that's, that's how you get a Zana that takes more effort. So, Super Kagero is... it definitely works. In Up until chapter 26, you can get her to one-shot every enemy there besides Xander, I believe. And Xander has Aegis, which reduces damage from her shurikens, and that would require you to use a spy shuriken to get 100% reliability. But... Yeah, Kagero can just kill everything in her path. Things get a bit more tricky when you get to the higher statted enemies of chapter 27, and she struggles a bit there. But this is definitely a build that works. I mean, you don't. Really, I mean, who plays chapter 27? In <laughs> my experience, Kagero. She just has. She just really works for like early promotion. She just has really good strength. Her speed is good enough, and her bulk is lacking. That's obviously the thing you need to invest more. In. And it just she gets she's just really helpful if you just early promote her and like the benefits are just far outclass just waiting for one extra defense. And I mean one defense it is good for like late game, but it's only one. You need to do a lot more than that. I, I just think that Kagor is probably not someone you really want to carry because of her bulk, but she's still someone that I would rather pick than I don't know. I mean who I guess Hinata. <laughs> yeah. There are definitely units that can be your carry a lot better than Kagoro, but Kagero is definitely not a bad choice. I wouldn't say that she's one of the best units in the game, but she can do her job just fine. Yeah, and I did it with a level 10 promoted. If you don't want to listen to me and promote later, then I mean, you have a higher stat Kagero, so like, you should have an easier time. All right, so is there anything you want to plug at the end of this video? Okay, so let's see. Uh, I, I do have a YouTube channel. I still do negative 100% growth. It is just 
I am working on that. It, the progress is very slow. I don't really upload very frequently at all. And it's not really more like, oh, like he's spending so much time on the, like the video. It, it's more of like, I'm just doing other stuff besides YouTube. I'm, you know, working, uh, college, and also doing Dark Souls, Soul Level 1, No Bow, Block, Parry, Flawless, Damage Taken, you know? It's a really great run, unlike Fire Emblem. <laughs> It's really fun. Like I, I, I promise you, I, I had so much fun with that. And I, I already finished the first game, and I'm doing the third game. I only have one boss left, Solo Cinder. Uh, you know, I should get that done pretty easily. He's, he's only the hardest no well boss in the entire series. You know, so yeah, that's gonna be really fun to fight. But besides that, if you for some reason like this type of sh posty comp content or a really bad upload schedule, I would recommend that you should probably look into that. That does not seem like a very healthy mindset. But yeah, I also was gonna do a bit about um, you should promote now with, with the low tier god thing, but I don't have the thundercloud like sound on my phone right now. It's recording, so yeah, I just just insert it in like post. I, I, I'm just if you I don't know. <laughs> no, the bit is ruined.